Hello world, welcome to the 62nd video in my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. And in video 58, I showed how we could automate the process of building a PowerPoint slide by going directly to the official website to get coronavirus updates and then building the slide. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. And so this is the slide we created right here. Let me uh, reduce the size of my head. All right, it's pretty simple, right? There's not a lot of on there. It just has the cases and the deaths. And we created this on 29 March, but you wouldn't know it because it doesn't show that on the slide. So this was a great first slide. And so if you are an action officer or somebody responsible for creating a slide for some sort of um, executive or somebody in the decision making process of helping the coronavirus um, prevention or the task force, then, you know, if you're an action officer for anything that you can't just give a slide like this, you can't simply just update these numbers right here. You would need to provide some contextual information and you always need to have the date or some sort of you know information on when this was last updated or created this slide and so um so what we're going to do today is we're going to create some contextual updates and we're going to provide a date that this was last updated all automatically so we're going to automate this process so this is what the previous slide looked like. OK, so I'm going to close this. All right, and now we're going to run our code. I created a function called update slideshow. And let's run this code real quick. All right. Now let's um, open this up real quick. And now you can see that the file is called test 11 April 2020. So and it has today. So let's open this up. And let's look what we automated. All right, so what we have here is we have the updated coronavirus cases, all right? But then I put that it's a 159% increase. Now, in hindsight, as I'm recording this, I probably would have put an up arrow so they know. Um, but here we go. It's a 159% increase. I put it in red because the increase in cases and deaths is not a good thing. So usually when you show up, you would show green. Down would be red. But in this case, red is bad. So... And then here, the deaths, unfortunately, have skyrocketed from 29 March to uh, 237%. Now, if you're doing this as a daily update, then these numbers wouldn't have been so dramatic. But the last time we did it was on 29 March, the day I recorded that video. And then we have a last updated, 11 April 2020, right? That's today. And so that would be a pretty good slide. Um, I am a uh, PowerPoint geek, so this is definitely not a slide I would present. So leave a comment below on what you would do. And also leave a comment if you're interested in Microsoft Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, because I'm a lot more familiar with those products than I am Python. And so um, what I would do is I'd put a fancy background, change the fonts everywhere, put an image somewhere. but. That's pretty good for an automated system of updating all of this information for you. All right, so now let's go through the code. Um, please watch the first video and there'll be a link in the description because we'll just go right into only the changes that we've done. So first you're going to need to import this. It's from the PowerPoint Python module PPTX. And so we're going to need this to change the font color. Um, if you're going to change, we did not do it in this video, but if I want to change the font size of something, you would have to do that here. 
And then we also imported the date. So this get corona updates function is in the first video. I made no changes to that. But what I did make changes is get previous data. So what it does is it's going to open up the test file that we had. Right? So this is the 29 March test file. Right? It's going to open that. And then we're going to create a list. I want to create everything that's stored, all the text, into this list, this right here. So for each slide in this prs.slide, so if I had multiple slides in this presentation, I could scroll through all the slides and get the data. And then for each shape in the slides, so a shape, uh, we went over this in the first video, is where the paragraphs are, or the title, or whatever they, they call them, shapes. And then for each paragraph in this shape, we're going to look at the text frame, and then we're going to append the data into here. So previous data dot append, and I just want the text, so paragraph dot text. All right, so we're going to be working with numbers. We're going to be doing math with numbers. So anytime you're going to eventually take text, which is a string, and move it into an integer or a float, I always recommend you strip it. And what that does is if there's spaces that you might not know in the beginning or the front, this will strip it. Also, when you're doing integers and floats and you're making strings, it does not like the comma of a string. So um, what you do is we're doing a... So the second... Let me open this back up. So what it's doing is it's taking this and it's taking the text from here. So this is the zero index. So it takes this, so this is zero. This is one worldwide coronavirus cases. And the number is two. So the second index. This is the third index. This is the fourth index. So I want the information the cases, the previous cases, will be here in the second index, 0, 1, 2, so third uh, item, but second index, and the fourth index. That's what we do here. So previous cases equal the second index of this dictionary or list we created here. We strip the spaces, the leading and the endings, um, spaces if there are but and I know there is because I got a bunch of errors trying to make this video and then we're going to replace the comma so this is a text comma and Python does not like that text comma so you're gonna replace this comma with nothing same thing with the deaths the fourth index right here right we're going to strip off any spaces and remove this comma and we're going to return it. And that's all that function does. Then we're going to do some math on it. So first to extract the previous cases and previous deaths, we're going to call this function, get previous data. And it knows to move this first into here. And it doesn't have to be named the same. But I, I like to name it the same because it helps me remember what I'm passing to each other. Um, previous deaths. Right, so it automatically inserts that. And then we're going to change it into a float. Right, a float is um, an integer is a whole number. A float can add in a decimal. And so um, if you did not do the strip and dot replace, you're going to get a base 10 error. Or you're going to get a can't convert string into float. So make sure you do these right here. Now, I'm a self-taught uh, self programmer, so if there's a better way to do this, leave a comment and let me know. So we're going to change these cases and deaths into float so we can do some math. We're going to do the same thing with the cases and deaths that we did in the first video. We're going to strip the space, remove the comma, change them to floats. And we're going to do some math. So I, the, the cases percentage increase will be the cases minus previous cases divided by previous cases. And then this is how you format into the percentage 
Okay, so we'll exit out of this one and go to our new one. So this is how you format into a normal percentage. If you wanted a decimal point, you could put dot one or dot two. Okay, so we create a percent from your cases and your deaths, and then we're going to return it so we can call it. All right, then we're going to go into the function we started in the first video, this update slideshow. First, we're going to create a day object of today. I, I'm in the military, so we go date, the name of the month, and then the year. So date dash the name of the month shorthand, and then the year. You do that with D, lowercase d, lowercase b, because if you did M, this would be a four right here, right? So we're going to pass it a percent B, percent big Y, right? Then I get the cases, the deaths, the percentages. Then I'm going to change them into a string because you can only pass text in PowerPoint, right? So we have the cases, the deaths the case percents, all right, then we're going to change those to strings, those percentages. This is previous information, so watch my first video, okay? And now this is something new. So this is where we ended in the first video on this first paragraph. Now we're going to add what's called a run, which means you're going to change some attributes in that same line, right? So I want the percentage on the same line, so it's called a run. So P, so we're going to start run, P dot add run, so that's this one, P is this, cases. Then I want to, the text I want in that run is the percentage that we just did. And then I want the color to be red. So this is RGB, re, red, green, blue. So it's all red. So you go 0 to 255, and you'll need, like we talked about, this to do this. So we're changing this percent into a red font. Okay, no change here. Then we did the same thing to our 10 deaths percent. So P2 is this, deaths. Then we're going to run equals p2 dot add run then that run dot text is going to be the death percent then we're going to change the font into a red font okay then we added a new paragraph so this is new from the first video so we're going to say last updated plus today and we created that here today equals date, date dot today and you'll need the from date time import date okay so today and then we're going to pass it this string then we're, we want it to be a level zero so this is level zero this is level one level two would be a tinier one and then I want to save it as test dot today dot our test space today dot pptx so in my first video, it was just test.pptx. So make sure you move the .pptx to the end, or else it'll save the file and your computer won't recognize it. And that's how you get it to save like this, test space 11 April 2020. All right, pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to my channel like this video, leave a comment and tell me what you would do to this slide um, if you're a slide gangster or a PowerPoint gangster like I am and uh, maybe I can try to implement it in future videos. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Goodbye world.